Okay, 1.3, common traits of good engineers. Common traits of good engineers. Everybody open up your page, your book to page 13, page 13. Oh, by the way, does anyone, did everybody pick up their book? Logan, did you pick up your book? Yeah. Aika, did you pick up your book? Yeah, yes. Okay, good. So, page 13. Common traits of good engineers. The first bullet point is engineers are problem solvers. Okay. To me, that one sentence there, in a nutshell, is what an engineer is. Engineers solve problems. That's what we do. You are presented with a problem and you are to solve the problem within the constraints of whatever you're doing. Okay, that's what an engineer does. And I mean, if you boil it all down to it, you solve problems, that's what you do, okay? Second one, good engineers have a firm grasp of the fundamental principles of engineering, which they can use to solve many different problems, okay? Makes sense, you have to have a good understanding of the fundamental principles, okay? Third one, good engineers are analytical, detail-oriented, and creative, okay? You obviously have to be detail-oriented, right? You cannot, you have to, there are so many different constraints, like I said before, details in any problem, okay? Some are given to you, some are, you have to, they assume that you already know, you know, so, so some are, you just have to, you have to know what they are, right? You have to know what the details are to solve the problem, right? Now, to be a good analyst, so to be a good problem solver, you have to be analytical. You have to be able to look at a problem and logically, analytically look at it and say, okay, you have to use step one, step two, step three. Okay? Creative. Being creative is great. It makes you a better engineer. Do you have to be creative to be an engineer? Probably not. I've had many engineering friends who are not creative at all. I am personally not that creative of a person, okay? But you can still be a good engineer, all right? Uh, three, the fourth one. Good engineers have a desire to be lifelong learners. Some, not all, okay? Uh, they take continuing education classes, seminars, and workshops. Okay? So this is kind of your progression as an engineer, okay? And we'll talk about that later in, in greater detail, but there are certain steps that you have to take to become from an engineer, from a graduating engineering student to what we call an engineering in training, to then becoming a actually a professional engineer. There are certain assessments, you have to take tests, you have to go to boards and whatever, okay? Right? But in order to do that, yes, you have to be, you have to do what we call continuing education, okay? So there's a certain like 15 to 20 hours of continuing education that you have to do, or you have to be, you have to be certified by a other, a different professional engineer that yes, you have met that commitment for every year, okay? Does that necessarily make you a good engineer? Kind of doubtful, okay? Good engineers, regret, regardless of their area of specialization, have a core knowledge that can be applied to many areas. Therefore, well-trained engineers are able to work outside their area of specialization in other related fields. Okay. For example, a good mechanical engineer with a well-rounded knowledge base can work as an automotive engineer, an aerospace engineer, or as a chemical engineer. So these are the type of the things that we talked about earlier, right? We I said that if you are in the four basic categories of engineers, you can transfer over to a different applied engineering field. Now, 
it makes a example here that if you're a good if it says that if you're a good mechanical engineer, we can also work as a chemical engineer. Eh, not so much as if you were an aerospace engineer or a nuclear engineer or something like that. Okay. Good engineers have written and oral communication skills that equip them to work well with their colleagues and to convey their expertise to a wide range of clients. Okay. So does this kind of fall into your stereotypical engineer? When you say engineer, what do you think of? Sam, what is your stereotypical engineer? Uh, smart guy, problem solver. Problem solver, okay. Is he the guy who goes around and has really good communication skills and, you know, was able to give like a breakdown on anything in front of 50 people at any given moment just like that? Probably not, but that's what it should be. It's what it should be, yes. Again, but the, the most of your engineers that you're going to encounter kind of not that way. They are by, the personality is really, you know, sit them at a desk, give them a piece of paper and, you know, and a pencil, and they're happy in their own little world. So is that, and that's more of a stereotypical engineer, okay? Now that was true 30 years ago when I was an engineer, when I was first starting in as an engineer. That was true 50 years ago when my dad, who was an engineer, did the same thing. Okay, that's no longer true now. Okay, no, nowadays, and you can still exist as a good engineer doing that, but nowadays, the communication, the ability to communicate, the, the ability to collaborate, work with, work with other disciplines, other engineers is highly valued. Okay, and as an engineer, if you have that skill, and you are a good communicator, you will do well and you will progress very well compared to your other compatriots, other engineers, if you have these skills, because it is not as predominant in engineers. Okay, does that make sense? So it's not necessarily you have to have that, but having that makes you more of an exceptional engineer. Uh, good engineers have time management skills that enable them to work productively and efficiently. Okay. Time management skills. So basically, this is another stereotypical engineer will break down everything you have. Okay, today I'm going to do from 9 to 9.15, I'm going to do this. From 9.43 to 10.32, I'm going to do this or whatever. And they tend to, you know, be a little, I don't know, anal about this. It's a really structure their, their day type of thing. Well, time management is a part of that, right? And that is why engineering students generally do well in college because they are more apt to have that skill. They are more comfortable in doing that. Good engineers have good people skills that allow them to interact and communicate effectively with various, we already talked about that, so I'm gonna skip that. Engineers are required to write reports. These reports might be lengthy, detailed technical reports containing graphs, charts, and engineering drawings, and they may take the form of brief memoranda or executive summary. And this is, again, calls into the communication skills. You can have all the best knowledge in the world, but if you can't convey that thought properly, okay, it doesn't do you much good. Engineers are adept at using computers in many different ways to model and analyze various practical problems. This is true. The computer is your friend. 99% of any design engineer, anything engineering design that you're going to do when you graduate or actually as an engineering student also is going to be off the computer. Okay, It is not that you are going to take a piece of paper 
and you're going to write down the tensile strength of this is this and whatever and you have to you know find out what the what the uh, what the momentum is and that kind of stuff it's it's not that you're not going to you're going to do very 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 little of that you will be sitting in front of a computer that has all those things already embedded in the software and you're just going to give them certain shapes or you're going to design it but it'll do all the destructive testing or whatever it is that they have to do on the computer and, they, and it can you know test it out see if it'll break see if it works see if it'll melt in certain situations and all these type of things okay that doesn't mean that you don't need to know the fundamentals you still need to know the fundamentals you need to know what makes sense in a design from before a starting point okay but the actual tweaking of it like i said before the tweaking of it will be all done by computers good engineers actively participate in local national discipline specific organizations by attending seminars workshops and meetings okay these are the engineering society meetings and yes they are pretty important important for you to be able to convey or trim or you know hand down your experiences or those of you already been to it like the engineering day when you have engineers came out and talked to you okay this is how you continue the tradition okay this is how you pay back some of the things that you receive Engineers generally work in a team environment where they consult each other to solve complex problems. They divide up the tasks into smaller manageable problems amongst themselves. Consequently, productive engineers must be good team players. So you must be a good team player, and this is true, okay? You have to be able to collaborate with other disciplines to make things work. So actually there is a project engineer a project engineer is the lead engineer who has underneath him you know you know two or three mechanical engineers or, or a chemical engineer and a structural engineer and they all together work together and the project engineer is the one who leads them through so that that they are a they complete the project on time b they complete the project within the budget Okay, if it's going to go above budget or whatever, they are the ones who go out and goes out and gets the approval from management and all that things, but they are the ones who are ultimately responsible in producing the final product. Okay. All right. So that's basically what a good engineer is. So really in the end, a good engineer, again, like I said before, is a good problem solver. You have to be able to look at a problem or a project that's given to you and you have to be able to produce it within time, within budget, within the constraints, every constraint that you have. And like I said, that's why engineering economics, which you will learn when you go to college, is going to be very important. Okay? All right. So we have about 18 minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go, but I'm going to give you an assignment. I'm going to give you an assignment. Your assignment for next. Uh, So here's your assignment. So your assignment is this. Your assignment is that I want you to research and find all of the schools in Oregon that offer an engineering program. So that's problem number one. Find all of the schools in Oregon that offer an engineering program. Number two, 
Of these schools, I want you to pick three schools and list the first and second year courses they were they will be taking. In other words, when you go to engineering school, your first and second year are all the same. You, the first years are basically more, more or less your regular core, whatever you like, intro to philosophy or things of that nature, where it's just a really basic common what, what you need. And the second year courses are your common engineering basic courses. So I want you to tell me these three schools, what they recommend or their first and second year courses that they take. Okay. Third, I want you to pick two schools out of state and do the same thing. Okay. So basically, I want you to compare the curriculum for our three Oregon schools and their first their freshman and sophomore year for engineering students and two schools that are out of state. And I want you to go ahead and make a comparison on those. Okay. Any questions on that homework? All right, we're done for the day. So in theory, I'm going to say that you should be working on this for the next 15 minutes. I will be online, still online. Helping. If you have any questions, I'll let, you can ask me. You do not have to stay logged in, though.